Welcome to Purpose Church Online. We see our online service as an opportunity to be the church in a new way and extend our vision of seeing everyone everywhere following Jesus. On Sundays, Purpose Church gathers together across Southern California and beyond to take part in worship, a message, and community. What does this look like? You can head over to PurposeChurch.com slash live or find us on Facebook. Purpose Church Online is a place of hope where we get to connect with Jesus and each other. Make sure to join our live stream services at 830, 945, and 1111 on your computers, iPads, or mobile devices. Don't forget to share our live stream with your friends and family because after all, we are better together. We're so excited to connect with you in the comment section this Sunday. Purpose Church, I'm Tamiko and I am our Justice Ministries pastor. I hope the Christmas season has been a blessing to you and your family so far, and I'm so excited that you've made it a priority to spend your Sunday morning worshiping with us. Today, Pastor Glenn will be continuing our series, Christmas Isn't Canceled, with a message called The Three Wise Women of Christmas. Often we hear about the three wise men, but today we're looking at three women who made very wise decisions when Jesus was born. And if you have children, we have prepared an interactive experience for families at PurposeChurch.com kids that everyone can enjoy together. You can also subscribe to their YouTube channel, Purpose Church Kids, to view their weekly program starting Friday evenings. Now before we start this week's worship, let's pray together. Lord, we come to you this morning and we are so excited and we anticipate the celebration of your birth this week. And so this morning we join together to worship you, Jesus, our Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. We worship you today and give ourselves to you as you gave yourselves to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hark the herald angels sing on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born
Isn't he good this morning? I want you to put your hands together.
Jesus, you are worthy this morning. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy. We lift up your name and your, your name alone. We thank you, God, for your presence here today. Thank you, God, for being here, Lord God, with us. You are Emmanuel. You never leave us, Lord. You are here with us right now. We thank you, Jesus, and we worship you today. Be with us, Lord, as we talk about you and your coming. We talk about your presence. And I pray, speak to us and teach us. We need you this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Hey, kids. I am so excited that we are all here together. I just love Christmas. How many of you think Christmas is the very best season of all? You guys do. Raise your hand at home if you think Christmas is the best season. I love Christmas. I love the decorations. I love the jammies. I love the family time. And I love presents. Do you guys love presents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to know yeah. at home if you like getting presents more or giving presents more, okay? So raise your hand if you like getting presents more. Okay. Okay. Raise your hand if you like giving presents to other people. Okay, I see some of both, and the truth is I love both too. I love presents. And speaking of presents, today I am going to tell you about the very best present of all, okay? Yeah. Oh, and speaking of presents, I have a present right here. Should we open it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the tag says, Merry Christmas to all of you love God. Ooh, Ooh what do you think God I got love all this. of us? I think. What I, do you think? Um, I think I, a candy cane. I, I think a candy cane. I think a candy cane. A choo choo train. Okay, well, that's a great guess, Lila. What do you guys think it is at home? We're gonna open it. Oh, there's something inside. It's beautifully wrapped. Let's see what it is. It's a piece of paper. Can you guys see what that says? It says Emmanuel. Oh, I think I get it. Emmanuel means God is with us. So God's gift to all of us is that he is with us. And that means that when we believe in him, we never have to be alone. Let me explain, okay? Because he came to earth that first Christmas, we are never alone. So many, many years ago, in the beginning, God created the whole earth, right? Yeah. But that wasn't enough for him. He wanted to be even closer to us. So he wanted to share it with us. So he made humans. And he made us to know him and to love him. Do you guys understand that? He made us to know him. He made you. He made you to know him and to love him. And because he came to earth that first Christmas as a baby, he came to live with us so that we can live forever with him. That's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. Will you guys repeat that after me? He came to live with us so that we could live with him forever. That's right. And that first Christmas, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, they were so happy because they knew this wasn't any baby. This was the baby Jesus. This was the savior of the world, the king of kings, the one who would come to save everyone. And they named him Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with us. So even... Even his very name, that's right, even his very name reminds us that God is with us. He is so close to us. And usually we end the Christmas story right there, but that is not the end. God wanted to be even closer to us. So Jesus, when he grew up, he died on the cross for our sins. He took all of the punishment for our sins and he died on the cross so that we could be with him forever. And before Jesus went back up to heaven, he wanted to be even closer to us. So he said, I am sending you the Holy Spirit to live where? Inside, uh, inside of, of you. Inside of us. So, so the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us when we believe. Isn't that cool? So the Holy yeah. Spirit is inside all of you and inside all of you when you believe. So you see, God doesn't just love us. He likes us and he wants to be so close to us. So since God gave us this amazing gift of himself, I have a special challenge for you. Are you guys ready? This is a challenge for you. This is a challenge for all of you watching, big kids, little kids, and grown-ups. So because God gave us the gift of himself, our challenge is to unwrap the gift that he gave us. And you might be thinking, what? But remember how I unwrapped this gift here? 
Well, God gave all of us a gift and it's our job, whether we unwrap it, whether we accept it or not. John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, that's the unwrapping part, will not perish, but will have eternal life. So some of you might be going, I don't know if I've ever decided to believe in him or make him the boss of my life. And you can decide that right now if you want to. The Bible tells us, Romans 10, 9, I love this verse. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is is Lord and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead you will be saved. you will be saved so you can make that decision right now you can tell Jesus I believe in you I believe that you're the Lord and you will be saved if you have never made that decision and you want to will you pray with me right now will you guys all close your eyes and bow your heads yep. okay and at home you can repeat after me out loud or in your heart if you want to pray this prayer for the first time dear Jesus, dear Jesus. I believe in you Thank you for coming to earth that first Christmas as a baby. Thank you for coming to earth that first Christmas as a baby. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins because you love me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins because you love me. I'm sorry for all of the wrong things I've done. I'm sorry for all the wrong things I've done. Please forgive me and make me a part of your family. Please forgive me and make me a part of your family. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, there is a party going on in heaven right now, right? And if you have already prayed that prayer and you've already decided to make Jesus the boss of your life, well, you also can unwrap the gift by continuing to spend time with God and getting to know him more and more. There are so many ways that we can get to know God and spend time with him this Christmas season. Can you guys think of one? Um, reading your Bible. Reading your reading Bible, Bible, that's an awesome way. At home, can you think of a way that you can spend time with God? And remember, Purpose Kids, what's yours? Mine's going to church. Going to church, yes, or watching online. And remember, I'm Purpose Kids, to God. talk to God. Merry Christmas. Jesus loves you and he likes you and he is so close to you. He is with you. We'll see you later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi everyone, my name is Claire and I am the Associate Pastor of High School Ministries here at Purpose Church. I'm so thankful to be able to worship with you all this Sunday. Now let me tell you about everything that's happening at our church as we near the end of 2020. This Thursday, we will be hosting Christmas Eve services to celebrate the first coming of Jesus. We hope you'll all join us for either our on-campus services or live streams at 4 or 6 p.m. We can't wait to see you there. This pandemic has been both stressful and exhausting for all of our healthcare workers. As they continue to faithfully serve our community, many of you have been asking how you can bless our local hospitals, nurses, and doctors. We reached out to our local hospital, Pomona Valley, and asked how we could best serve their team. They shared that individually packaged snacks would be a great way to bless the hospital workers. Purpose Church is excited to have the opportunity to bring snacks as an encouragement for our medical personnel during this season. If you would like to partner with us, please visit PurposeChurch.com slash bless to see how you can join in. Your year-end tithes and offerings before December 31st are so important as we look ahead to a new year of ministry in Pomona, across America, and all around the world. Now more than ever, we need to tell people that Jesus is our only lasting hope. Please give today and help us share His unending love. Whether you give online, drop off your offering at the church, or mail it in, you will help change lives in 2021. Thank you for your generosity. Now let's continue to worship together. Oh 
Good to see you, Purpose Church. Happy Christmas Sunday. I am so thankful for you and your faithfulness to God, even during this unusual year that we've just come through. Uh, it's been a great year, and God has greatly uh, blessed our church and used our church for his purposes. Uh, however, I, I do want to be honest with you that the pandemic has impacted our income. And so the giving we receive between now and the end of the year is absolutely critical so we can continue all of our ministries in the year 2021. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples out of the hundreds of examples of ministries locally and globally that your generosity through Purpose Church uh, supports. Uh, your regular giving, for example, to Purpose Church throughout 2020 enabled Matt and Lori, uh, not going to use their last name, or nor am I going to use their country uh, for security reasons, but they their names are Matt and Lori. They they met here at our church 25 years ago. I think they were playing uh, volleyball in our gymnasium, met, fell in love, and they went out 25 years ago. They have been development workers from our church in Southeast Asia for 25 years, and your giving during the last year helped them to run three Project Hope homes for children who were sold by their parents or found abandoned on the streets begging. And I just love this picture so much. Here are two boys uh, being baptized in two barrels. And to me, it just let's hold it there for just a moment. Think of these precious young boys um, begging on the streets, abandoned by, by their parents all alone. And because of your giving during the, the past year uh, through this uh, uh, part of our ministry or one of the hundreds of ministries that we have around the world and locally as well, because of your giving, these two boys, their physical needs were met. They were taken in. Their emotional needs were met. They were given the love of Jesus. And now their spiritual needs as they follow Jesus are, are met as well. I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better use of money than something like that. I, I can't think of having more fun with money than giving to ministries that support this kind of thing and, and so many others uh, like them as well. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of all that you're uh, giving uh, through Purpose Church accomplishes. Uh, closer to home, let me give you another couple of examples. Uh, here's uh, Pastor Tomiko, our pastor of justice, uh, and her Everyone Free ministry uh, that she started and that has had such an impact. Talked about across Southern California as uh, our church being the like the, the poster child uh, for reaching victims of human trafficking. We're like the gold standard for that, of everyone free. Uh, that's happening right at home, just like Matt and Lori and their ministry on the other side of the world. And then Pastor Eric Vasquez. I don't know if any of you saw, some people uh, sent me the, the video clip uh, from Friday morning, if you were watching Good Day LA, and they were interviewing our Pomona superintendent, Richard Martinez. And he uh, mentioned, uh, Pastor Eric Vasquez from our church, mentioned his ministry, Justice for Youth, uh, which is helping out uh, so many young adults in our community, young people in our community, and particularly helping uh, people of color uh, during the pandemic. And so this is what your sacrificial giving has gone to, and I'm just asking you to just pray and ask God, what would God have you do between now and the end of the year so we can finish strong in this year and start strong in the next year to continue these ministries and hundreds like them uh, as well uh, to change our world uh, for Christ, everyone everywhere following Jesus, meeting needs of people, spiritual, physical, emotional, of the love of Jesus. Uh, let's do all that we can and ask God to show us what to do as we finish off our year as strong as possible. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to preach a message called Why God Called You to Live in California. And I know I don't usually try to 
you know, pump my own sermons, but I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this one. This is like going to be my favorite sermon of the year. I think it's going to be the most helpful, uh, the most encouraging wherever you live, but particularly if you live in California, you're not going to want to miss this one. And so I encourage you to join us uh, next Sunday, December 27th, uh, as I preach on why God called you to live in California. Now, before we jump into our study, let's just to uh, four quick uh, Christmas 2020 uh, memes. Uh, here's uh, the first one. It says, it's, it, it's been a rough year is the title for this one. <laughs> that's the tree and that's the gift. It has been a rough year in 2020. Here's my favorite one. Uh, the next one, the sex cartoon. Uh, she says, uh, Dad, I'm 16 and I asked for a Toyota not a toy Yoda, but she asked for a Toyota. And I love the mom in the background going, uh, told you, to, to, told you so. Uh, here's another one I just get uh, such a kick out of. Um, retail workers, once Mariah Carey starts singing, <laughs> All I want for Christmas is you. If you work in retail and that song's on over and over again, you know exactly what they're going through. And then this one final one I get such a kick out of. If 2020 was a bonus check at the end of the year, uh, that's what it would be, the Jelly of the Month Club uh, bonus check if Christmas was a bonus check. Now today we're gonna continue our series called Christmas Isn't Canceled. Uh, with the three wise women of Christmas. Now, every, just about every year, we at least mention uh, the three wise men of, of Christmas. But did you know that there were three wise women of Christmas? Um, one of them was married, one of them was singled. Uh, one of them was widowed. So one married, one single, uh, one widowed. Uh, the first was named Elizabeth, the second one was named Mary, and the third was named Anna. Now, every one of these three wise women faced a major uh, obstacle within their lives. Uh, Elizabeth faced major disappointment. Now, she was old and unable to bear a child, and she had been childless her entire life. Uh, Mary had to face a major change in her life. She's pregnant, and she's single. Uh, Anna had lost the love of her life, her husband, just a few years into her marriage, and so she had to deal with loss. So disappointment and change and loss were the three things that these three wise women had to deal with, but they all overcame each of those because they were wise. Uh, Elizabeth overcame resentment and bitterness. Uh, Mary overcame her fears. And Anna overcame her grief because they all made wise decisions by making wise choices. I love this quote by Rick Warren. He writes, how do you know when somebody is wise? By looking at the decisions they make. Wise people make wise decisions. Foolish people make foolish decisions. So the first wise woman of Christmas was Elizabeth. And we pick up her story in one of the biographies of the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The two biographers that wrote the most about his birth were Matthew and uh, Luke. And so we pick it up with Luke chapter 1, verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, <clears throat> there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But here they were living for God, with all their hearts, they were all in kind of people. If God, if God let them, they wanted to be as close to God as possible. They, they were living, the Bible says, righteous, blameless lives, just obedient in every possible way that they could obey God. But there's a but in their lives. And I'm sure you can identify with that. That you're serving God, you're following after God, and there's this one thing in your life that's a but. They, uh, many things are going well in your life, but then there's this one but, or maybe there's multiple uh, buts in your life. And, and, and it's that one thing that you just say, God, why? God, why is there this B-U-T, this, this but in my life? But even though they were such godly people, they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive 
and they were both very old. And you can probably think about something like that in, in your life that you've prayed about for a long time. You've prayed about it a lot and it just hasn't happened yet. And, and like Elizabeth, you say, Lord, why as the years go by? And here's the choice that Elizabeth had and here's the choice that, that you and I have. You can be bitter or you can be better. You can trust God or you can get mad at God. You can double down in your commitment to God or you can bail on God. Uh, the choice is ours. Elizabeth had a choice and, and, and we have a choice. You know, I use this illustration all the time. I know it's very simple and very common, but I think all the time in my life about the half full glass. And every one of us in our lives, our lives are like half full glasses. There's a half that's full that, that, that's the good stuff in life, but then there's the half that empty that we don't have, the half that we're blessed with, the half that we don't yet have. And every area of our life is like a half full glass. There are things we're glad about and then things that we grieve about, that we're, that we're sad about. I mean, your marriage, if you're married, you can spend your life being grateful for the half full of uh, who your, your marriage partner is uh, and, and, and what drew you to them to begin with and why you fell in love with them to begin with. You can be grateful for who they are or you can spend your life just bitter about who they're not and what needs of yours they don't meet. I mean, the choice is ours in, in our marriages. Are we, gonna, are we gonna be bitter because of the empty half or are we gonna be better and grateful uh, for the full half? The same thing is true with our jobs. Uh, same thing is true with living in California. I'm going to talk about that next Sunday, about how can we, if God's called us to live in California, how can we focus on the full half? And I'm going to share with you the full half to be grateful for and not always um, complaining or, or bitter about the half of living in California that we, there, we're not so happy with or not so blessed with. And so the choice was Elizabeth's and the choice is ours as well. And the main point here is that living for God does not guarantee you a hurt-free life. Elizabeth and her husband, they were living for God with all their heart, and yet even that degree of faithfulness did not guarantee them a, or us a hurt-free life. God never said that everything is gonna happen the way we want in this life. This is not heaven. Don't confuse the two between earth and heaven. Don't expect heaven uh, to, be, uh, to be on earth, in heaven. There's no sorrow, there's no suffering, there's no sadness, there's no problems, there's no pressure, there's no pain, there's no disappointment, there's no tears, there's no grief, there's no loss, there's no pandemic, there's no uh, COVID. Uh, none of those things are in heaven. But this is earth, and on earth, everything is broken, and it's because we broke it. Everything's broken. God didn't make it that way. Things weren't broken in the Garden of Eden. We, through thinking we could run things better on our own, uh, uh, through Adam and Eve, but then each of us have participated as well. We thought we were smarter than God. We thought we could do things better than God. And so things in this earth and in this life are broken, and it's, it's because we broke it. Now, Christmas is all about God coming into the world, Jesus coming into the world to fix it. But, but we broke it. And so if you expect heaven on earth, it's just gonna set you up for disappointment. Whenever you expect heaven to be on earth or earth to be like heaven, it just sets us up for uh, disappointment. Rick Warren, uh, again, writes, nothing works perfectly on this planet. The weather doesn't work perfectly. The economy doesn't work perfectly. Your relationships don't work perfectly. Your body doesn't work perfectly. Everything's broken. Living for Christ does not guarantee a pain-free life. In fact, Jesus said the opposite. Jesus one time said, in this world, you will have trouble. But then he gave us that encouraging word, but take heart, don't get discouraged. I, Jesus, have overcome the world. And Jesus came into the world to fix what is broken. That's what Christmas is all about. Jesus came into this world to fix its uh, brokenness. 
Uh, now we continue with the story uh, of Elizabeth, uh, continuing with verse 8. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and to burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And we know him as uh, John the Baptist. And then the angel goes on to tell him that his son is going to prepare the way for Jesus. So uh, he had to be born at this particular moment in history, six months before Jesus, uh, a few months before Jesus. This is when he had to be born. And now finally, after all these years, Elizabeth finally understands the timing of the delay. For years, she's been like, why not now, Lord? Why not now? Why not now? Why not now? And now she realizes because her son was gonna prepare the way for Jesus, uh, some of you are as old as I am and can remember Johnny Carson, who was the first of the great uh, late night talk show hosts, and he had Ed McMahon as a sidekick. And Ed McMahon, every night at the beginning of the show, The Tonight Show, would say, here's Johnny, here's Johnny. Well, this is Johnny, John the Baptist, saying, here's Jesus, here he is. And the only way he could do that if he was born right before Jesus. That was the, God's perfect timing. And so now finally, after all these uh, decades of waiting, Elizabeth finally understands God's timing and the reason for his delay. A delay is not a denial. And in your life, whatever is your but, whatever is the thing that you've just been asking God for, why doesn't God come through? A delay by God is not a denial. And a spiritually mature person knows the difference between a no and a not yet, between God's no and God's not yet. Is there something that you've been praying about and it hasn't happened yet? It just means that God has something bigger and better planned for you. I hope it's in this life, but it may not be till heaven. You may not see the impact of your life until you get to heaven. And then like Elizabeth, you'll, you'll understand the delay. Uh, you'll understand why God said, uh, not yet. And it'll all come together and it'll all make sense. Uh, as you look over our 150 year history as a church, and we're just finishing up our 150th year, just within the, the last couple of weeks here of, of, of 2020. And just a little part that, of this history that I've been here, you just see this principle again and again. Uh, about 35 to 40 years ago, uh, somebody gave us a huge piece of property up on a hill in San Dimas, overlooking where the 57 and the 10 uh, freeways uh, come together. And, and it just seemed so clear that God wanted us to relocate our church from downtown, the heart of Pomona, uh, to San Dimas. It, it just seemed to make sense. But then God said, no. People wanted to do it, but then God said, no, we're going to stay here uh, right in the heart of Pomona. And oh, what a blessing that has been. What a strategic, we, we are in such a strategic place. If you wanted to be where Jesus was, would be, if you want to be in the heart of where people have needs and, and, and they're hurting and, 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 and where we can make the greatest impact, uh, if, if you want to be there, Pomona is the place to be. Now, we couldn't see that 30 or 40 years ago, but now we can just see it so clearly. Why, God, there is no more strategic way. And I know many of you uh, drive past uh, wonderful churches in order to get here to Pomona. You live elsewhere uh, around in the surrounding places of the Inland Valley, but you drive past those churches to be here in the heart of Pomona and you know the blessings that's here. There is no greater calling in life. There's no greater blessing than to do, see God do something miraculous, something great in a difficult place. 
Not in an easy place, but in a hard place. And that's what God has called you to do. You, as, as part of the body of Christ at Purpose Church, God called you to do that. And now we can see that so clearly. Uh, where would you, why would you want to be anywhere else but right here? Because this is where the challenge is the greatest. And this is where the impact is the greatest. And this is where I believe the eternal heavenly glory will be the greatest, right where we are. And then 27 years ago, when I came here as pastor, I remember begging God uh, to help us sell the north part of our campus. It was just a bunch of medical buildings. We weren't really using it at all. And it's kind of like, Lord, why, why can't we sell those? Because when I came 27 years ago, we were facing bankruptcy as a church. And I said, God, it would just solve our financial problems if we could just sell that northern part of our campus. And God said, no. God said, no. And instead, he had a better plan. Uh, God began to grow our church. And he, and he began to uh, bring people here to the heart of Pomona that wanted to see God do something miraculous in a difficult, challenging place. And he, and he moved those people's hearts to increase their giving and and today, the north part of our campus that we were able to hold on to uh, doubled our parking, even as our church tripled in size. And now that part of our campus now holds our justice center and our clothing center and our food center and our international center. Uh, Elizabeth was blessed because she chose to trust God's plan and not become bitter. And Purpose Church has been blessed because we chose to trust God's plan, not to become bitter, but to say, God, what better plan do you have for that? And the same is true for us in our individual lives as well. It says in verse 24, soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion uh, for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. How kind the Lord is. And as we look over our 150 year history, all we can say is how kind the Lord is, how kind the Lord has been, how kind the Lord is today and how kind he will be in our future. The second wise woman of Christmas was Mary. Uh, we pick up the story in verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. The angel goes on to tell her that she will have a baby even though uh, she's a virgin. So why is she troubled and why uh, would she be afraid? And there are many reasons we can come up with. Here's a couple of them. Maybe she was afraid of criticism and of rejection. Uh, Mary's thinking, how do I explain this virgin birth to Joseph, my fiance, or to my family, or to the people of my village? Uh, she had a fear of inadequacy. How in the world am I supposed to be the mother of the Son of God, and, and, and what are your fears? What are your areas of fear of rejection or your fear of inadequacy? What are, what are your fears today? And yet despite these fears, she chooses to trust God's word. Uh, it says in verse 38 of Luke 1, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Uh, Mary basically said, I want what God wants for my life. So I'm all in. I'm all in with whatever God wants. I believe he's got a better plan for my life than I have. I'm gonna trust him. I may not understand it. I, I may, it's above my pay grade. It's above my intelligence level. I may not be able to understand it, but I'm gonna say that whatever God wants for my life, that's what I want. And I challenge each of us, starting with myself, to have that same attitude as we move into 2021. Oh God, I'm all in. Whatever, whatever you want, God, I'm in on it. And I may not be able to understand what you're up to in my life, but I'm gonna say that whatever you want for my life, that's what I want. 
And so later on, Elizabeth said to Mary in verse 45, a blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would, would come true. And so Mary was blessed because she chose to believe God's word instead of her fears. And you will be blessed, I will be blessed when we choose to believe God's word instead of listening to our fears. And then the third wise woman of Christmas was Anna. We pick up the story in verse 22. Uh, Luke chapter two, verse 22. This is after the birth of Jesus now. When the time came for Mary's purification offering at the temple, as required by the laws of Moses, after the birth of a child, his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. For in these laws, God had said, if a woman's first child is a boy, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. So Mary and Joseph take the baby Jesus uh, there to the temple of Jerusalem to be dedicated uh, to, to, the, to the Lord. And uh, today at our church, at the, uh, at the outdoor service at 1030, we're gonna dedicate a baby to the Lord. And we, de we love to dedicate babies, just like Mary and Joseph did uh, here at Purpose Church. And now we see, meet Anna in verse uh, 36. There was also a prophet, a prophetess or a prophet named Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after marriage. But then after that, she was a widow until she was 84 years old. Uh, married for seven years, uh, probably got married when she was about 17, and so had seven years of marriage with her husband, so then she, but at the age of 24, her husband died, so uh, for uh, the last 60 years or so, uh, she had been a widow. And here's the question, what do you do with a blocked love? What did Anna do with a blocked love? What do you do with a love that's been blocked when all of a sudden, who you want to love is not there. What do you do with a blocked love? You redirect it. That's what Anna did. She redirected it. When you have a blocked love, you redirect that love uh, somewhere else. And Anna basically says, you know, I've lost the love of my life, my husband. We've been married only uh, seven years, but I'm gonna redirect my love towards God. I'm just gonna worship God. I'm gonna love God. I'm gonna love the people. Uh, who come into the temple, and that's going to be my life, and that's going to be my ministry. And then the second thing she does is to tell everyone about Jesus. Let's pick up the story in verse uh, 37. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and, and praying, and worshiping God, and uh, spoke about the child. She worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Uh, on to the uh, next verse. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Anna was blessed because she chose to focus on God's presence and talk to everyone about Jesus. She was blessed because she chose to focus on God's presence and to talk to everyone about Jesus. And the same is true for you this Christmas. You will be blessed if you focus on God's presence and you talk to everyone about Jesus. Let me give you a, a challenge. Uh, let's call this challenge Operation Anna, okay? Operation Anna. Um, would you uh, be praying right now about someone that you're gonna invite to watch our uh, Christmas Eve service here online on Thursday night at, at, at 4 p.m. or at 6 p.m.? 4 p.m., 6 p.m., Thursday night, Christmas Eve, and on demand at the conclusion of the 6 p.m. service, um, Operation Anna. Uh, uh, just ask God, God, is there somebody like Anna that you would have me? Lord, help me this Christmas to focus in on your presence, Emmanuel, God with us, like Anna did. And then talk to people about Jesus. Share Jesus with people. One of the best ways, we're gonna have just a tremendous Christmas Eve service. It is gonna be so powerful. It's gonna be just tailored. We, we have made it so that it's perfectly suited for you to share with your friends in order to connect them with Jesus. Now, before I finish, is there anyone watching right now, anyone joining us here online, 
wherever you are, that you've never received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Emmanuel, God with us. Is God in your life? Is Jesus in your heart? It's as simple as three words. Sorry, thanks, and please. God, I'm sorry for the sin and wrongdoing in my life. Just like uh, Sarah Holmstrom was talking about with the kids, with the kids' sermon early on. God, I'm sorry. Thanks, God. Thank you for sending Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. Thank you so much for sending him so that what I've broken in my life, so that my broken life, so that my brokenness uh, could be healed once again. I'm sorry, but thank you. And then the third word is please. Jesus, would you please come into my heart and begin to fix what's broken. Forgive me for my wrongdoing and then begin to fix what's broken in my life. And I wanna walk with you uh, during the entire next year. I wanna follow you, and would you continue to heal my broken heart, and heal my broken dreams, and heal anything, heal my broken relationships, anything that's broken in me, would you begin to heal me, because that's why you came that first Christmas. Would you pray with me? Just pray silently as I pray out loud. Oh God, this Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm sorry that I broke things. I've broken relationships. I've broken your law. I've been disobedient to you. I've broken your will for my life. I'm sorry. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, that came into the world that, that first Christmas. Thank you for sending him to to heal, to fix what I have broken. And now please come into my heart. Forgive me for my wrongdoing. Be my savior. And now I wanna follow you as closely as possible in the coming year. I want you to be my leader, my king, and my Lord. Please come into my heart and begin to fix the brokenness, Lord, little by little. I won't be perfect overnight. In your eyes, I'll be perfect because I have Jesus in my heart, so I'm forgiven. But Lord, in the, in the reality of daily living, just fix me a little bit every day. Fix the brokenness, heal the brokenness until I stand complete before you in heaven, whole and complete and perfect and healed once again, for all of eternity. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed with me said, amen.
glad that we got to worship together today. We hope you'll join us this Thursday for our Christmas Eve services at 4 or 6 p.m. And next Sunday, Pastor Glenn will share a message you won't want to miss. We will take a look at how we can make a difference in our communities in a message entitled, Why God Called You to Live in California. We wish you a very Merry Christmas.